Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Wacom webinar on a wonderful Friday afternoon. Let's give it a one more minute for people to join this webinar and this session today on Zoom and settle in, get yourself comfortable, and then we will be starting this webinar shortly. Okay, so let's get this started. Thank you ever so much for joining us today for this um, uh, webinar from in our series Wacom at Home. Um, today we'll be learning about how to teach creatively online and to engage students. And with us today is um, Ross from Teacher Toolkit and also Guido who is joining us as the Wacom expert in this panel. Yeah. But before we dive into the session, let me introduce you to a couple of basic and very simple to follow housekeeping rules, which may, will make this experience much better and much more comfortable for all of us. So we're looking at a webinar that's gonna last us for about an hour, give and take a few minutes. Um, we will have plenty of time for Q&A questions um, at the end of the webinar. For this, please use the Q&A function in Zoom. You will find it in the, um, in the toolbar of Zoom in the bottom of your screen or the top, depending whether you are on Apple or uh, PC. Um, we usually keep the chat for immediate questions and stuff like technical issues, etc. We do keep an eye on the chat, but questions do tend to get washed away and it's hard for us to actually track them and answer them. Uh, if you put them into the Q&A um, feature, we will be looking into that as well during the webinar and answer a lot of those questions already on the fly. Uh, but it also allows us to um, consolidate a few of those questions and um, answer them together in groups uh, in the Q&A session at the end. Um, Yes, and the only additional information that I would have for you is that we obviously, we record the session and we will be sharing a link to the recorded version of the session in a follow-up email in a few days after this webinar. So, um, who are we and what are we doing here? So Wacom has been around for roughly 40 years um, we are a pioneer of so-called digital pen input technology. That's a lofty word, but if you look at a computer and you look at a keyboard um, and you have creatives in mind, for example, then you will realize that a keyboard and a mouse pad is probably not doing you the best service for a computer. So we were one of the first companies to think of how we can connect a digital pen to a computer and make life much easier for everybody um, who might not get these ideas across through a keyboard. Um, and we are now um, seeing with the situation at hand with COVID-19 that um, we have a lot of new potential use cases in, in situations where we realize that a keyboard might, where the, um, the keyboard is maybe not the best way to interact with, um, with other people online. That's so much for Wacom for the moment. Um, with us today is Ross from Teacher Toolkit. As I mentioned, um, he is running a very popular platform on the interweb and that uh, you probably know and are aware of. And um, yeah, we're very, very happy to have you on board um, because it's obviously much more interesting to have somebody out of the field of, uh, or in the field of education who's got experience as a teacher to show us a little bit more how technical solutions could help us in this situation. So here you go and enjoy the webinar and talk to you later. Thank you, Herman. Um, so just uh, say hello to everybody. Um, my name is Ross. I've been a teacher for in London for 25 years in high schools. Um, I'm a huge fan of technology. It's um, also a, an Achilles heel in the classroom. But I want to talk about the, the Wacom devices uh, that we've got today. You'll see 
on my screen, uh, I've got one by my side. So I've been road testing uh, this uh, particular device for the last couple of weeks. And with me is Guido. So I'm going to ask Guido to just um, introduce himself shortly. Um, I just realized I pressed the wrong button there and, and logged off. So I'll sort that out in a second. Um, my particular passion um, is teacher workload. Um, and I've been writing on my blog on Teacher Toolkit for about 12 years now, and I have about half a million monthly readers. So that's become a full-time job as well as me training teachers in schools across the world. Uh, so I'm going to share some of my insights from my blog, some of the, the data that we've uh, got from people participating this afternoon. And I've got a lot of questions that I'm going to throw at Guido, and, and Guido is going to go through and model some of the things that I believe that you would want to see as a teacher. So he's very much the expert, not, not myself, in terms of using the device. So I guess, Guido, can I start off with asking you just to introduce yourself to everybody, and then I'll, I'll throw a first question at you. Um, yes. That's okay. Thank you, Ross. So, um, hi, my name is Guido. I am also uh, with Wacom about 20 years now, and... My background at Wacom is more on the product marketing, product uh, management side. And since a couple of years, I'm uh, supporting our sales team in doing solution consultancy. So um, working with our customers, finding out which of our product portfolio fits best to their needs or solutions. And this brings me also directly into the education business. So we are taking care of education since many years. But since the COVID-19 situation, um, it turns mass market, so to say. So yes, and um, I will, I'm really, really happy um, and pleased to help today and work with Ross together and, uh, and, and find the answer for your questions and show you what to do with Wacom Tablet. Thank you. So uh, Guido, I guess the first question, you're, you're on the Wacom One device and I've got the Cynic uh, 16. I guess, could you just uh, show people, uh, I'll get my uh, video connected again here on my side, yeah. but could you just give everyone a little demo of how you've got it set up on your desk and we'll just kind of go through the general logistics of how it's connected to the table. Yes. Um... I would have to, so this is my Wacom One tablet you will see here. Let's put it a bit bigger. So uh, you see actually two Wacom tablets. You see a Wacom Intuos here on the back, which is a traditional tablet, as you probably know, so where you can write directly on an opaque surface. And in front of me, I have my Wacom One. And the Wacom One is basically a screen and a tablet combined and connected to, in this case, a PC, but you can also connect it to a Macintosh um, uh, PC. You can connect it to a Linux powered PC. So this is a nice thing you, you will have with our Wacom tablets. It connects to all three different operating systems, Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. And the connection is, is rather simple. So you need a power connection for, for, for the leads. And this cable here, this is a three-in-one cable, goes into my Wacom One and it breaks out into a USB connection for the tablet pen signal and a HDMI for the video signal. So very easy also to dismantle and, and to carry around if you work either in the school or in your home office. So um, just install the driver on your PC or Mac and plug in the tablet and off we go. Great. So, Guido, in terms of um, the, the benefits for uh, people uh, using kind of Windows, Microsoft applications and Apple and, you know, or maybe why not an iPad? What, what would you respond and, and say to, the, to people asking those questions? Oh, yeah, this, this is a great question. So, actually, um, um, the, the nice thing with the Wacom One tablet is it's super flexible. So uh, for example, the iPad is a great device. It's super portable. Also with the newer iPads, you have a pen, but the, the, the portability and the, the bound operating system, the iOS is also the, which I think is the greatest limitation because you are really stuck to the iOS. You can only run applications which are supporting iOS. And also if you want to use the pen on the iPad, mm -hmm. the pen has to be supported by the application. And by, uh, at least now, a lot of applications just do not support the Apple Pencil. And this is not the case with a Wacom tablet. So as I mentioned, it connects to whatever PC or Mac or Linux. And since the pen after installing the Wacom driver behaves like a mouse, 
So you can control all your application like you would do with a mouse, but since you are navigating directly on the panel, you're much faster and more direct and also more intuitive. So, and coming back to applications, basically all applications you, you are used to work with in your in your in your day-to-day -day routine can be operated with a Wacom pen. Mm -hmm. But also the pen is pressure sensitive. So in applications like um, Microsoft Whiteboard or PDF annotation, you can do some nice, very natural looking annotations. So almost like on, on paper. Right. So I'm going to come to all the, the fun and exciting demonstrations yeah. shortly. Um, I'm just going to, if, if I, I direct everyone to my camera table, you'll see here, I, I've got the Cintiq 16 um, large device. I've got it on a stand at the back. It also has a stand built in. So I've just got an extra tilt. And I've also got this Intuos Pro, which is kind of a, a tabletop um, pad for drawing and my pen. And that's how I've got it set up. And again, I'm still pretty much new to this uh, last couple of weeks. So I'm still playing around with how I would use this on my table. Um, I'm also just gonna share a bit of data with you on the screen. So I'm just gonna show, show you four uh, slides. So you all get a sense of um, the issues that we're all facing. Um, you know, given lockdown. So I hope you can um, see this if I just put those full size. Um, so we, we just asked a few questions when people signed up. And, you know, for my context, working in the UK, there's been a big disparity between uh, government led schools, so state schools, and private schools. But generally speaking, given the lockdown, schools have responded uh, really well uh, to get their resources online, curriculum, those types of things. But you can see here the data. So we've got about 300 signups for this afternoon session. Um, you can see how people have adjusted to online lessons. It's important to, I guess, differentiate between live synchronous lessons and asynchronous lessons. So things that are recorded and shared after rather than live like we're doing now. Um, next bit of data, you got, uh, we, we asked you what, what we found was the most challenging about teaching remotely. So at some point where appropriate, I'm gonna share the research. So. Uh, my own fascination with teacher workload, but from context, my, I'm doing my doctorate degree at Cambridge and I'm looking at teacher voice, teacher autonomy, uh, and how people use technology in particular. Um, so there's a, a range of responses here. Um, in terms of the biggest challenge that you all said, it's engagement online. Um, so what we wanna try and do is engage and kind of demonstrate how, and I'll signpost some bits of research which suggest how best to go about doing the activities um, and I've actually done a lot about reading on memory and cognitive load theory and if you take a child's age uh, as a broad uh, rule of thumb if they're eight years old add two and their paying attention span is about 10 minutes interestingly for adults and um, it's about 20 to 25 minutes also and our working memory can only store four to eight pieces of information for about 30 seconds. So I'm keeping an eye on the clock. We're 15 minutes in. So I'm gonna get Guido to do a demonstration to keep you excited in a moment. And we asked you um, if you owned a Wacom product. So you can see the vast majority of you don't. Um, so we hope you'll be interested in the devices. I'm sure you'll have your own technology already set up in your uh, kind of work context. And uh, I guess I just wanna finish um, with this one here. Um, you know, you look at the biggest issues here, engaging generally students. So a lot of people kind of said it in different ways. So it was the overriding issue. I know my own work in uh, state schools here in London, often funding, time to learn how to use it, ICT training often uh, in the least uh, lowest priority in terms of uh, needs for teachers across the school. And it's not like that everywhere. That's my own experience. Um, so I'll just come out the slides, Gita. I guess... Um, first question I can ask you is, can you just give us a kind of whistle-stop tour of how you might use this device yeah, in, in a maths or an English lesson? What would you do? Um, actually, yeah, let me switch my camera to the tablet cam that you can see also. And while I'm sharing my screen, you, you can also see what my hand is doing on the camera. So let me do a screen share here. So I've prepared a, a couple of scenarios. So. For example, you should see my screen now here. And yeah. basically what I would like to, to tell you in the next couple of minutes is what you can do already by just having a Wacom tablet connected and just using standard Microsoft Windows 10 um, tools 
and also the Microsoft Office, and then you can also look into the PDF applications. So let's start. So basically, um, before I come back to your, to your math and biology questions, so let me show you a nice tool which basically helps you to emulate the typical blackboard and, and whiteboard on your school. And if you're running on a Windows operating system, uh, which is Windows 10, you have and a tablet connected, you have the Windows Inc. workspace. Can you see it down here? So it's a yeah. small tiny icon. And if you click here, you have the Microsoft whiteboard. Let me open the whiteboard. And now you have a screen where you have a couple of whiteboards. So I have already some whiteboards prepared, uh, math, biology, and physics, and you can create a new whiteboard. And let's go into the math whiteboard here. Just click in here. And this is what it basically is. It is a whiteboard. I can use my pens down here. I have a couple of pens. I can adjust the colors, the, the, uh, the strength of the pen. Let's take a red pen here. And the nice thing is with the Microsoft whiteboard and the Wacom pen is it is pressure sensitive. What does this mean? It means if you press harder and softer, it behaves like a real pen. So mm -hmm. the stroke gets wider and smaller depending on my hand pressure. And I have tools like the eraser here, which is also pressure sensitive. And I have a highlighter and a text marker. And starting from a white blank board, you can use whatever your pen you want. With your pen, let's take a black pen and start drawing, for example, formulas. So I guess the immediate benefit, Guido, is, you know, traditionally my own experience in the classroom in front of a whiteboard with 30 pupils in front of me, and I would be annotating on the physical board. Um, I guess having a device at my desk in any kind of room, a large lecture theatre or an assembly hall, um, and again, dependent on the size of the screen that can project the uh, image from the device, uh, I guess there's a, huge, a lot of potential. Yes. Exactly, because this is a nice thing, as you mentioned, if you're sitting in a classroom and you have the, the projector behind you, and if you use a standard whiteboard, you have to turn your back to, to your students and mm -hmm. draw something. Here, you're constantly keeping eye contact with your audience while drawing on the Cintiq or on the Wacom One, like mm -hmm. on paper, and with all the, the advantages of being digital. So, and what else can you, can you do? What you cannot do with a whiteboard. With the Microsoft software, you can also add content. So you can add, for example, images, which is, yes, of course, you can use an image from, well, let, let me go back and go, go into the biology part. You can add an image which is coming from your image library. So in this case, it's coming from my desktop. I take an animal cell. So the nice thing is now I can use my tools here to resize it, to put it into a certain position. This is also a nice thing. The whiteboard is huge. So you can use, um, or you can prepare your lesson in a way where you can use one whiteboard for different graphics. Now you can, I can zoom in, zoom out, and I can use my pen here for annotation. So what I like about this is if I was developing a curriculum or a scheme of work, I could work on one slide and zoom out and go to lesson two next and let's drag over and let's look what we did last lesson. Yeah, right, exactly. Fantastic. You can go back, you can go back here and everything you do, it's automatically stored mm -hmm. and you can recall it anytime. And the nice thing I also want to mention is um, you can go here and you can go on Bing image. It's not mm -hmm. Google image search, it's Bing image because it's Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And you have a handwritten field here. You can do whatever cell. And now the handwriting comes into place and say, okay, this is what I found on the internet, images with the term cell. And they are also under Creative Commons. So you can, they are free to use. So I have a question, Guida. I'm a, yeah. um, I'm a big advocate of reducing teachers' workload. Um, teachers are incredibly time poor they don't have a lot of time and i think that what you've just shown there is a great feature that um i can type uh, write the word cell very quickly it gives me some images i can add them to the device is there anything else that it can do really quickly that would help busy busy teachers save a bit of time yeah definitely um definitely that one so if, if you look at here so basically whiteboard 
I mentioned it already. And um, the nice thing with the whiteboard is you can collaborate with your students. You can interact. So by sure. just clicking here, yeah. you can create a sharing link. And Microsoft creates a sharing link. And this link now you can mail to your students, mm -hmm. or put it into the chat window, and then you can interact. Every student having this link can work with you on this specific on the file. same site. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, um, before we came live online, I, I was talking to you about my visualizer. So I've got lots of versions yeah. of these. Yeah. Um, this has got a little light, a magnifying glass. Yeah. And typically, if I was doing a drawing with my students. I'm a design and technology teacher, so a bit of graphics or an assignment. I emailed you over an assignment earlier yeah. uh, to do a bit of work, Guido. Um, could you just yeah. show people, rather than having a visualizer, how yes. the uh, Wacom One could be used to uh, mark a student's piece of work? Yeah, usually a visualizer like the one you showed comes with their own application or they, they can import the images. And here is uh, what you, this is something you cannot do with the Microsoft whiteboard. What you do here is you use an a application like OpenBoard. OpenBoard is a nice piece of software. It's, it's uh, also open source. It's, from, it's developed by a Swiss university. And it's basically also, first of all, a whiteboard application. But what makes this nice is it works in a show desktop mode. And here is what you can already see. You have your normal Windows desktop and you mm -hmm. can use whatever application, for example, your visualizer or just a web page. And you can use tools from the software to work directly on whatever content. In this case, on my web browser, or mm -hmm. I can even go on YouTube and have a video on YouTube. And I can work on my YouTube video. Fantastic. Go to a certain image and then use my annotation tools here as well. Wow. And of course, this is just for, for the lesson, but you want to provide some materials to your students afterwards. And what you would do here is you would do a screenshot of whatever you do, put it into the whiteboard application, and then you can export it as a PNG graphics and mail it to your students. And this is also one way to work with a visualizer in a live content. But there's another way if you have a visualized document already, which can be, for example, a scanned or photographed PDF document, you can go into another application, which is a PDF application. There are many PDF applications on the market. There are mm -hmm. many of them come for free. And some of them are you pay about 30 pounds. Let me show you that one here. This one is, for example, the application called PDF Annotator. And here I have opened a um, PDF document, which is basically an English lesson, right, Ross? This is, uh, this is a, 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 a religious education lesson. Yeah. So, and here you see, for example, there's some English text. And here you can use also tools like the highlighter. Okay, here is how people use their money that matters. Obviously, even for me as a German, this is it's not sounding right. So <laughs> I would highlight this here. Okay, this is not correct. I can use even a red pencil and I can do So you can take, take pictures or share this with the student Yes. Uh, yes. Can you share this live also so the student can yes. see it happen? Of, of course. This is basically what we are doing now, right? If you, yeah. if you are in, in an interactive session with a student, you have applications like Teams, Zoom, or WebEx. Mm -hmm. So I share my screen here, put the PDF doc, uh, uh, the PDF annotator up, and I can do it live while the students are watching here. And afterwards, I can save this as part of the PDF and can. I can forward it to my students just as I would do it on normal paper. Sure. Um, so I'm going to ask you for some app demonstrations in a moment, Guido, but just um, for yeah. people watching, there'll be a lot of people thinking about costs. Um, I, I know myself when I first got this device, it's hard to get a bit of confidence to be able to use it personally, never mind uh, with 30 students are running around you um, all the time. I'm just going to take my screen and just show you a couple of things that I've been researching. Um, so if I take your screen, um, yeah. Yeah. Dean, if that's okay, I'm just going to show you everybody my website and just point uh, to a couple of blog posts that you might want to 
uh, watch back on the recording and just check. First thing is, first blog I want to signpost. Um, I read this piece of research, I believe it's the only one of the kind, it's called The Size Matter. And what I've got for you here is, uh, you can see here, here is a slide that I might share with my students uh, in live or, uh, sorry, synchronous or asynchronous lessons. And you've got a large image of me here, and a small and a medium. And essentially the research conclusions were that the smaller your video during live screen demonstrations, so whether whatever Guido is doing or through your slides, works better to reduce cognitive load and help students retain information. Ultimately, as teachers, we want kids to remember stuff. So that blog's called The Size Matter. Um, the, the next blog, and, and I know not everyone's watching here uh, in the UK where I'm based, but um, this is a piece of research from the Education Endowment Foundation, which is a, an organisation here in England which looks at lots of research in, in British schools. And what, you know, I, I won't go through it all, but essentially there was kind of key conclusions. What, is the, what does the evidence say about teaching remotely? And this is something we've all had to do um, during lockdown. And essentially, the key thing for me is whatever piece of research that we, we read or, or, or get, take part in ourselves, it's the quality of the teaching that matters. So here I am stuck at home with all my devices. I've got a kind of mini whiteboard behind me. How do I deliver engaging lessons is what I'm going to pose to Guido shortly in terms of apps and helping people's confidence. And then there's one more bit of research. I'm just going to signpost. This came out last month. And again, this is from an organization called Evidence-Based Education. And in England, we have this huge focus on looking at research to inform our teaching practice. Uh, and it's a very, very good, interesting piece of research. It talks about four uh, components to understand, to create, manage, and present. And then the 17 elements. So I've given you a graphic there with the 17 things that good teachers should do. So you might find that interesting. There's a link to the full paper there. So I just thought I'd just take a moment to just share some of the research that I've been reading throughout lockdown as we all get to grips with uh, teaching remotely. So my, I've got a couple of questions for you, Guido. If yeah. I'm a teacher new to this device and I'm lacking a bit of confidence, what would you say is the best thing that I should start with? And what are uh, any kind of applications that you would recommend I use first to get that confidence? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So basically, I would really, really recommend to start, although we have a lot of tablets, to start with an on-screen tablet like the Wacom One. Because with this tablet, you directly see what you are doing. You see how you write. It's like on paper. With mm. traditional tablets like the, the Wacom Intuos, you have the hand-eye coordination issue. Your eyes are, are looking on the screen. Your hand is writing down there. And this takes a lot of time and training. Between three hours and three weeks is my experience. And this can also cause frustration at, at the beginning and also leads to feeling unsure and uncomfortable when doing your, your webinars or your online seminars. So that's why I really, really recommend try a Wacom 1 or a Cintiq 16 as you have, because it's like on paper, no learning curve. Mm -hmm. And then also try an application like Microsoft Whiteboard. And before you do your first um, online session, play around, do some strokes, draw something, draw formulas, import PDFs, import images, um, do arrange your workspaces, just play around and then you feel comfortable in a very, very quick way. And then if your confidence is there, mm -hmm. your confidence also turns over to your audience. Yeah. So I guess, you know, there'll be a lot of teachers watching who already use, um, you know, Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom. Could you give us a little demo of maybe a most, a, a really, I know you've already done a couple of ones, but uh, maybe some yeah. plug-in apps or some software that teachers already use. And I've been using Google Classroom myself for six or seven years. Yeah. Um, so could, uh, could, we, could I maybe shift your focus away from, you know, maths, English, and science and something to a bit more creative, like an art lesson? Or yeah, definitely. Like definitely. And could you maybe give us a demo uh, with maybe inside Google Classroom or using Microsoft applications? Yeah, let, let's go into screen share mode again. So you should see my screen. So yeah. basically, this is what I recommend. Of, of course, most of the applications for, for online training, like Zoom, like Teams, they have their own tools to annotate on screen. But I always recommend, don't use them. Just go into simple screen sharing and use 
more appropriate schools like white uh, tools like whiteboard like even office documents what, mm -hmm. what people mostly don't know is that you have a microsoft office and you have a tablet installed let me open word for example you have the drawing tools also in your office applications mm -hmm. and with these drawing tools you can do a lot of things to, so you can draw and annotate in whatever document you have opened in word and you can all even um draw and put it into certain shapes or into formulas directly. I come to the formula thing mm -hmm. later on. And it also, Word gives you a drawing canvas where you can do your drawings in your Word document. And this you can do live, but also mm -hmm. in, 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 in an offline mode. And also the nice thing is one, two, three, four, you can also do an ink replay, which goes into, into replay your strokes in a, in a certain oh, that, feature. That's a great feature. Yeah. And so you have infinite possibilities. And this is not only in, 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 in words, it's also you'll find in Excel and in PowerPoint. If you do your PowerPoint presentation, if, when you're, if you're in presentation mode, you can do your... So I guess any, any people watching that are budget holders, people with the money, for, for example, uh, or people that might be working in leadership teams in, in schools, colleges, universities, I guess access to Microsoft Excel and all those places where you yeah. look at spreadsheets, that it's basically yeah. all there. Yeah. And also one interesting, so I think a lot of people already know uh, is Microsoft OneNote, which is a tool which is also available for most operating systems. And this is basically made for handwriting. So you can do different, I would say notebooks with different pages and in the pages you can do um, for example, let's come back to the mathematic formulas. So, mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned this, I can draw my form formula here, x plus two since zero. So this is just a formula like I did previously on the whiteboard. But the nice thing is with one note, it can turns it into a real formula by using the selection tool, highlighting this and say, okay, let's go to the math. And now it's a, okay, this is the formula I've recognized. And now if I'm a math teacher, I can do different activities here, like solving for X, putting a graph in 2D, or just put it into a standard formula into my Great. OneNote document. And this is, um, there is even a tool, it's called Class Notebook, where you can really prepare your cl online classes with, only within PowerPoint. And mm -hmm. there are so many videos specialized on this topic. Mm -hmm. Uh, one note for classes. So it's really, really recommending for me to look into that one. Well. Um, I've got a couple of other questions, Guido. In yeah. terms of just living life in school for teachers, you know, I've worked in some incredibly challenging schools in London where, if I'm honest, if I had this on my table, one, it's either the cables are going to get pulled out, two, yeah. I might have to keep locking the device away. Yeah. Um, but let's just let's just take a scenario that your cable at the top there comes out. Could you just give us a quick demo of how long it takes to restart and set up? Yeah. Um, Is that possible? Yeah, I could basically. Um, let's see if what happens if I pull it out in a live mode. Should I do yeah. it now? Should I try to yeah, yeah, yes, please. Because I think this is a reality yeah. that if a child okay. comes and pulls the cable here. out, how so, long does it take for a teacher to set it back up? Okay. Now. My screen now is black. Yeah. Just so we can see your screen, screen whiteboard yeah. at the moment. And we are back. Here uh -huh. we are. So, so super quick. So it was super quick. And uh, this is a, the nice thing on a, on, a, on a modern PC, I would say, running Windows or Macintosh. It, it stores the whole screen setups basically i'm working here on three different screens so i have a very special setup which is not even the use case you have in schools usually mm -hmm. you have one or two screens plus a projector and here but even in this more complex situation you see even if i pluck the cable we plug it it takes a second or two and in then... terms of security you know when you turn the device on can anyone you know obviously you're logged into your software so i guess it's just the display you'd need to log in those types of things yes yeah so it's just um just going back, so I did my stop my screen because it was on the wrong screen. Let me go back to my main screen here. So, okay, now you can see my screen again, right? Yeah. So you so, just log in as normal. Yeah. 
And uh, in a, in a, it's a situation such as um, leading a whole school or college assembly where there's 500 students in a large amphitheater. Um, I, I know the answer, but just for you know your your opinion, how would you set this up in a, an assembly room, and how may it be used? Yeah, so this is a, a scenario which we have relatively often also in, in bigger schools and universities. Uh, apparently, if you are in a big main auditorium, of course you can use the same device I have here, but mm -hmm. usually you have a fixed installation there. And for this specific cases, we have bigger screens. So 24 inch, even up to 32 two okay. inches. So, so twice is, the size that I've got here. Yes, yes. It, it, it's, it's really like a big screen and this is already built in or or attached to a podium and then you just come with your content on a USB stick and plug it in and off we go. So it, it's, it's way more fast to access because it's a fixed installation where this one is a typical situation where I as a teacher could change um, quickly between my home situation or the, the present situation at school. Now I've got some key questions. I'm, I'm going to put uh, uh, my uh, uh, cynical hat on. Uh, why why should I not use an iPad? Yeah, um, I, I briefly mentioned at the beginning. As I said, the iPad is a great tool, but I personally see the iPad more on the student side. Me as a teacher, I want to have full flexibility. Mm -hmm. I want to work with a full range of applications, and I want to work with the applications I want. On iOS, I'm limited with iOS. Sure. And iOS is not nice if I want to can operate something with the touch of my finger. If I want precision, I need a pencil, the Apple Pencil. Yeah. The Apple Pencil only works if the application is really supporting the Apple Pencil. Otherwise, it does not work. So, and with a Wacom tablet, if you install a driver, you are flexible. As yeah, I mentioned, you can use Microsoft and Apple products on whatever. It. Whatever, since the pen replaces your mouse. So everything which works with a basic mouse cursor works already. And many applications, since we are in the market for almost 40 years, so we are kind of recognized in that market and yeah. many people adapt the application also to work with the pressure sensitivity. Well, and a, I think you've sold it to me, uh, you know, cause I've used an iPad for years and I've already liked the functionality and the breadth of applications I can use. Here's the key question, how much do they cost? Yeah, that's a good point. So um, the Wacom One is our entry level interactive pen display. I think we are starting here with a recommended retail price of 350 pounds-ish, so 349 pounds. Mm -hmm. And the one you have, I think it's 549 pounds, which is a 16 inch, slightly are, bigger. Are these business prices or education prices? Uh, no, this is standard recommended retail prices. So education prices are usually lower than this one. So we have okay. educational programs, especially in the UK and in all other countries. In and for people watching that might want to buy uh, a set for a classroom or for a department for a group of teachers or a school even obviously there'll be discounts available and this, is, like that. this is then uh, a complete different story then we have other prices so so-called project prices so please get in touch with us and we can help great now i had another question before we came online i you know i if i think of when i first used my visualizer or an ipad things like that and I'm, I, I've worked in a design technology classroom where the, la the classroom is very large and I would need to walk around regularly rather than sit at my table. Uh, and I asked you earlier about the, you know, it needs to be connected. Um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the device? Because there's going to be one or two. So I just wonder, you know, I'd like to be able to carry it around. And we said earlier that you probably couldn't. So could you just give us some pros and cons, Guido? Yeah, usually. Um if, if, if you are thinking of a use case scenario where you have, want to walk around in a room, we have different devices. We call them mobile studios. So it's called Mobile Studio Pro. Okay. We have them in different sizes, 13 and 16 inch. And they're basically, on first sight, they look like a Wacom One, but they're a bit thicker and they have a high performance computer inside. So they're basically tablets with the same advantage and the same sensitivity of a Wacom digitizer on top. Mm -hmm. And, and those portable. devices are fully portable, they run on battery, but also powerful enough even for, for I would say, um, university lessons on CAD and 3D because- and are, those, are those typically just for the teacher or is that device given to the student? Actually, they are also given to, to a student. We have a big school in Italy, in the north of Italy, where when the students start, 
every student got a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro as part of their curriculum. Right. Now, if they dropped it, how robust is it? The, 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 the other yeah. device that you're talking about, the thicker one. Yes, it, it's pretty robust. So it's, it's, it's not super lightweight. It's, it's optimized on performance and robustness. So it's an aluminum unibody device. It's heavy. It's quite heavy. It feels heavy. It feels solid. It feels sturdy. Of course, you can drop it if you drop it from here on a concrete mm -hmm. floor. It might get some damage. Sure. But compared to other devices in that market segment, I would uh, flag it as super robust. Yeah. Now, not ruggedized, um, but robust. Yeah. Now, uh, we're getting into the last 20 minutes, and I'm, again, what I've learned about memory, everyone's cognitive load. Um, Gigo, can I ask you to do your best demonstration or, or show off your super skills? You've been using this device for a long time. Can you give us a little th two or three minute demo of some of your kind of best bits or the things that you can do and show us its true potential if that's possible? Yes, so, so what I basically would, would do, again, I would use Microsoft Whiteboard because it's so flexible. Mm -hmm. So and let's create a new whiteboard and just import whatever I want to, to work on, it, on an interactive session. So I already showed how to import images, but I can also import PDF documents. So let's go one. Let's take the, my very popular cell. I open the PDF document with a complete curriculum, which contains, in this case, I think, 10 pages. Mm -hmm. Now it asks me, OK, let's take all pages or take a single page. Now I'll take one page in here. OK, put it here, there, somewhere. Then I can also add a Word document in here. Let's take a storyboard, whatever it is, again, and resize it a bit, arrange it, mm -hmm. and so on. And the nice thing is here also some more tools. It has a cool topic, it's called ink to table or ink to shape. For example, if I want to draw a table here, let's do another pen, I use this one. You see the auto correction goes into yeah, a square nice. and here, and just I draw some lines and it gives me a table. Oops. Great. Here we go. And now I can use another pen. I can do my annotation directly in the table and the table automatically adapts the size. But there's more. I have sticky notes here, which I can use. Mm -hmm. And it automatically recognizes I have a pen. It goes into handwriting recognition. You've got a voice recorder there, I can see as well. Um, yes, and um, I have other cool tools. I have a ruler. And with the ruler, I can do ruler things. So I can use to adjust the angle. However, showing the ruler, the nice thing with a interactive pen display like a work on one is you can use your physical ruler and put it on top for mm -hmm. your French curves and since it works like it on, paper, on, on the screen itself yes exactly you can really work like you would do in in analog mode but with all the advantages of being digital and can you just show us like maybe in a spreadsheet what might happen you know around a board table or in an office meeting you know the kind of things you could do in traditional Excel graphs, those types of things. Yeah. So um, let's go into Excel. I'm putting my Excel sheet on the screen. Here we go. And pretty similar to to um, to the one of what I've showed in the work document. I can use here my drawing tools and do highlighting, like in the board tools, and say. To my annotations Check. and this will be stored as part of the excel document it mm -hmm. will not corrupt the cells in the excel document the cells are still there and and, and they, they, they still work as they should but it goes as a kind of overlay to my excel document so the original document will not be corrupted and you can still you can flip out of that and go actually into the document or yeah, sure, sure. You can save this one. And if you're going here, for example, into the select mode, I'm still in my classical work okay. mode. 
Now, um, an another question. I mean, I, I talked earlier about the research. It's great to have all these devices, but the quality of teaching matters. Um, what training does Wacom offer people that purchase a device, you know, in terms of online tutorials, live webinar sessions, such as what we're doing now? Yes, so, um, so we are offering live online sessions for, 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 for educational institutes on demand that we offer. And, and for teachers, we are working on a series of small YouTube videos. So we have a, a playlist already on seven videos which we made um, in the last couple of weeks where I just explained what I've explained now in this webinar. Again, which tablet would be the best to use, uh, what applications do support, what pen features, how do I work with Microsoft Whiteboard, how can I use with the tablet in Teams or Zoom. This we have already, this is on the YouTube playlist. I think Jerome later can put this into the chat as well. Mm -hmm. But we are working constantly on, on um, uh, on new content for the education markets. Is there, um, just, to, just to kind of from my own benefit as well as hopefully everyone else's, the, the way the Wacom products come with, do they come with specific software or are, is it synchronizing with, you know, Microsoft, those, uh, Apple, I mean, I, I, before we came online, I've also downloaded all the kind of um, Clip Studio uh, downloads that come with each product. Yes, um, actually, the, the, um, we have various products, and these products we have shown here today, mm -hmm. Intuos on the back and the Wacom One, they come already with software. So if you buy the product and you register with, uh, for the Wacom ID, you have a choice of software you can download. Yeah, shall I show Wacom everyone on my screen and show them what I've yeah, downloaded sure. on my yeah. device? Let's just... Um... See so, if I can fathom this out. So I if I, I now and yeah. you can take over. Okay, so if I put this screen on over here, and I'm going to just drag over some of the things that I've um, had on my um, Cintiq. So this um, is called Sketchfab. There's a whole uh, bank of graphics. I guess once I, I develop a bit more degree of expertise, I'll be able to, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Guido, but I'll be able to draw and play around with these a little bit more. Yeah, these are the, the Sketchfab is more from, uh, from an application which is called Substance. So you, you, can, you can work on uh, visualize 3D content. Yeah, so, so 3D models and you can use in your own presentations, for example. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm already hooked, you know, being a graphic designer, I'm already hooked with all this stuff. Um, and then, as I said at the start of the session, I've got all my devices connected here, adding different applications. I can go into all the different settings that I've got connected so far. So I've got a Wacom One, a Cintiq 16. I've got the Intuos Pro uh, desk pad uh, with my pens. Um, just everyone can see this side. You know, I'm pretty much a beginner here, but I've got all my kind of display settings here and then I've also downloaded a couple of studio things which give me some kind of graphic animation so you'll see that there um, where I can I guess I can do so, all sorts of interesting drawings so um, correct me if I'm wrong I think that's pretty much what most people would experiment with in the beginning and, and learn what software they need depending on the subject they teach yeah Right, so this is just uh, the, the, the software you just showed were most for the creative user, but that doesn't mean that um, a teacher cannot use them. For example, the application you showed, like Clip Studio Paint, is a wonderful drawing application. So mm -hmm. where you can also draw your, your sketches in that application and share it with the students. And also, um, what I we probably forgot to mention is that the Wacom One, you can even use in a very portable environment by I mentioned it, you can connect it to your Windows PC, to your Macintosh, and to your Linux, but you can also connect it to certain Android devices. So like an, mm -hmm. if you have a Samsung Android phone, you can connect the Wacom One via USB-C adapter. Mm -hmm. You can even run the Wacom One with your power bank, so in a complete, I would say, remote location. And then, magically, your phone screen goes up to 13 inch, and you can operate all the apps on your phone with the Wacom Pen. And there are a couple of applications like Wacom Autodesk Wacom. Sketchbook, drawing applications, Bamboo Paper from Wacom, where you, which you can use on both screens, on your mobile phone, and even if you have the Wacom One connected on the big screen here. So there's loads of options, and assuming yeah, most people it's, have it's a phone. Super flexible. Yeah. Um, 
So, Guido, thank you. I'm just going to finish with this um, slide and then I'll ask Joran to come back on and maybe ask one or two questions. But, you know, going back to the beginning, I asked, uh, we asked everyone, what's the, what's, what do you find most challenging? And engagement has been the overriding issue. Um, and I guess, you know, the research that I'm aware of, countless times, it's the quality of teaching that matters. Now, during COVID, when we are in lockdown and not necessarily... Um, with our children in class, how we do this online is going to make a, a huge difference. So there's a, a training need, I guess, for teachers. Uh, Wacom devices offer a solution, and I, I think Guido's definitely convinced me that moving, you know, I've got Mac devices moving away from just the iPad in the classroom to having a, a broader range of uh, features and availability on the, uh, the Cintiq device I've got here, plugging into Microsoft applications as well as Apple, um, offers a huge scope. So um, here's your data, folks. Engagement seems to be the biggest um, reason you're all here. So I hope, um, you and I, I hope I've asked the majority of questions on your behalf. Um, we'll, we'll pause for five minutes just to take some general questions in the chat box. And I guess uh, Wacom will also tell you what's going to happen with the video and the slides and the data that we have and send out um, to you all through your email, um, you know, how you can look, uh, get more information, um, certain devices and things about uh, costs and those types of things. So for me, I'm just going to say thank you at this point. Thank you, Guido, also. Uh, we've been your hosts. Um, so over to our, our super hosts uh, for any general questions. <laughs> thank you, Ross. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Guido. Well, thanks, Ross. Thanks, Guido. Um, this was a very, 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 very interesting webinar. I, even I have learned a lot still after, after so many webinars on our products. Um, let's have a quick look at the Q&A section of Zoom. There's a couple of things. Most of them have actually been answered by you in, in the course of the webinar. Um, mm -mm -mm. Where was it? Um, so obviously we will be sharing um, contacts in the follow-up email. So for everybody who's curious about pricing and special offers um, for schools and, 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 and uh, bigger purchases, um, that will be addressed in a yeah, minute. So where we will a also... question there about um, how do you verify they're a teacher? I guess you would use your your organization's email address or account to, to demonstrate that you are employed by a college or university. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think all the detailed questions to how to use the whiteboard have been addressed by Guido. Yes. Um, I've shared the link to our YouTube videos, both in the chat and also in the Q&A. It will also be part of our follow-up email. And if you go to Wacom on YouTube, um, it will jump basically right in your face, um, all, those, all those detailed videos by, by Guido. I'll, and I'll just add my blogs in there for people if they're interested in the, the chat box to read. Um, later if they're interested in some of the things that I've been researching. Uh, so that uh, link I've just added is, uh, does size matter for synchronous or asynchronous videos? This one is the Education Endowment Foundation, which is the evidence on remote learning. Quality teaching matters. Disadvantaged kids having access to devices. Um, engagement between students online also is critical. So what, you know, I guess what we could have explored more of in the device you know was how do you get kids to interact with each other through the bits of tools and voting software and things that you might have and then the last one was um the toolkit which i gave you six, uh, 16 or 17 suggestions um so i'll just ping that through otherwise um that's all the things that i've been reading and learning about uh, so i'll just pop that through to finish I see one more question concerning Google Classroom. Um, maybe that's something for Guido. Um, if we can share some info on that topic in the yes. follow-up email, that would be would be fantastic. Or yes. if you have a quick answer now, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Also, I have uh, one other question I want to point out. But let's start with the classroom question. So yes, I would say um, I would use again the screen sharing opportunity for Google Classroom and Google Slides and Google Docs. They they have also some pen functionality in built in, but I always would recommend okay just use the screen sharing bit of this tool and go for a more specialized tool 
like the open board or like the Microsoft whiteboard to edit your content. Um, this is what I recommend. But of course, you can also use the onboard tools um, you will find in the Google apps. Another one which is popping out in the chat is, does Wacom One support 3D applications like ZBrush, Maya, etc.? Yes, this is basically where Wacom is coming from. This is our DNA. And since these applications are professional applications, uh, it, that does not mean that you cannot do it with the Wacom One. No, of course you can. No matter which Wacom tablet you have, if one application supports Wacom tablets in general, it doesn't matter which tablet you are using. So they all work. Uh, also, there's another um, point I want to mention, which comes also to the question, uh, can you control live st uh, students annotate the whiteboard during lessons? Um, yes, you can do this. Um, not sure if you can do this in whiteboard, but if you, for example, use um, other whiteboard applications, which are purely browser based, let me mention a Collaboard or Limnu. Um, those tools are purely browser based and you can dedicate, def dedicated, define, okay, you should annotate, you cannot annotate, you can just watch. And there are so many browser based whiteboard alternatives um, as well. Okay, and the last question I see open in the Q&A is the PDF annotator that you used early on in your session. Um, that was basically the inking function of that, of that PDF reader, right? Yeah, this is, this is a PDF annotator. This is a dedicated software, which is Xodo, for example. But you can also open a PDF in OpenBoard and annotate directly. So OpenBoard also can open um, Word and PDF documents. This works as well. Okay, and another one. The last and final question in the Q and A section: What if you teach art and design? I think you mentioned it. Um, yeah. That's potential. That's our that's our home turf, uh, and you <laughs> exactly. will find a huge list of yeah. videos and webinars on creative users from very basic entry level to basically Disney uh, full feature length animation films. Um, it's all there. Uh, it's worth exploring. And yes, that's, that's what we do. You cannot draw with a mouse. So it's like working with a brick. So that's why you always prefer the pen because you grow up with the pen. The first thing you want, you, you start scribbling and writing your name is a pen. And this is why a Wacom tablet brings this into the digital world. So without any, I would say, compromise. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or as we say, the pen is mightier than the keyboard. Yeah. And the and mouse. mouse. <laughs> Get rid of my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, interesting question. So uh, yeah, I guess thank you to everyone for watching. Have a good weekend. Okay, let me quickly share this last and final screen with you guys to wrap this up. Thanks, Ross, for joining us today. It's been super, super, super helpful to have those questions coming in from your side. Uh, and thanks, Guido, for um, showing us all the all the fun details of the already uh, of all the opportunities that most of us already have with the with the software on board of our devices. I think that's very, very helpful. Um, to wrap this up, um, thanks again for joining us here, all the, all the participants of the webinar. Do follow us on social media at, uh, at Wacom uh, and keep an eye on the upcoming webinars. We, at the moment, do quite a lot of webinars um, on the topic of education and also working from home, and there might be some helpful and useful tips coming up for you as well. Um, if you're confident and willing to share whatever you created and been doing with a Wacom device or want to bring to our attention, tag it with made with Wacom and the team from social media will look at it and pick it up and reshare it. Obviously, don't forget to follow our presenter Ross and Teacher Toolkit with uh, teachertoolkit.co.uk and at Teacher Toolkit for more uh, education related topics. 
Um, on our website, we also have a dedicated landing page for all questions concerning education and the products that we offer for this part. Um, you can find it both on our actual Wacom.com uh, website, but you can also find a dedicated section on those products on our e-store. So do check it out. There's a wealth of information, more links to blog posts and other webinars that we run on this topic. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good source for additional information. If you have more questions, we have added here the contact details of two of our peoples um, in the UK, Sarah Vandenbelt and Jason Walden. Um, if you have a very specific request on pricing and project deals for your school, um, local information that you need, um, reach out to them. They're happy to assist you. Um, if you know, there's a last minute question just coming in. Wait, okay. one is out of stock, it says in the UK. When will they be available? Well, I suppose it's just one of those container ships that are somewhere between the channel and Rotterdam and waiting yeah. to be unloaded. Um, give us a couple of days. We are continuously replenishing. Um, obviously, if one big school buys a bulk, then there might be a little bit of a delay. Mm -hmm. um, but products are coming in on a regular basis. So do check out, do come again, uh, or reach out to, to Sarah and Jason. Um, you can also just reach out to us on our social media channels. We will find the right contact person for you, no matter where you try to reach out for us, be it customer support, be it on our social media channels, be it info at Um We will be more than happy to connect you to the right people for your questions. And I can see another question there from Kit. Um, so I've been using the Bamboo One for a number of years. I, I can't, it must be four, uh, probably five or six years. It's on my shelf just here. Um, so I'm very familiar with Wacom products. There's another question coming up. So um, this is something for Jason, I would say. So um, is there an Irish store? It's too okay. I think we have a couple of stores in Ireland. Those 17 tips have just been asked for in the chat box. I'll just send the link there, Catherine. <laughs> That's the link there. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, we, we have, yeah, we have um, resellers in Ireland uh, that can, can help out. But uh, yeah, re reach out to me directly and I can kind of guide you and help you. Same story for Middle East. So um, yes, um, we, have, we have a couple of stores in Dubai as well, also in Abu Dhabi. This is, uh, those stores I know. So, but just drop us an email and um, either to Jason or to Sarah and they will forward it to the right people and we can take care. Same in Africa. So we are serving Africa as well. Just let us know where in Africa and uh, drop us an email and we will take care. All right. Cool. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to everybody. Thanks for joining in. Enjoy your weekend wherever you are and do check us out again at another opportunity. Thanks very much to everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Take care.